Have you ever tried to count the rings of a tree? Did you know that we can use the tree rings to find out the age of that tree? This is what we will learn in today's video and we will learn exactly what kind of information we can extract from the tree rings. Hello and welcome back to my channel. And if you're new here, I'm Maria and I create videos related to cultural heritage and heritage science. In today's video, we will learn about dendrochronology or tree ring dating. And we will see exactly what kind of information we can extract from the tree rings. First, let's see how dendrochronology works. When looking at a cross section of a tree, we can observe a lot of rings there. Let's have a closer look. These rings go all the way from the tree center to the very edge of the tree. The innermost rings are the oldest rings, while the rings on the edge right next to the tree bark are the newest ones. Each of these rings represents one year in the life of the tree. So by counting the rings, we can find out how old the tree is. And we don't need to cut down the tree to count its rings. We can use an increment borer to collect the core sample from the tree and count the rings on that core sample. I will add a link in the video description for a video that shows exactly how these core samples are obtained. The oldest tree in the world at the time when it was cut was about 4,900 years old. Can you imagine being the one counting all those tree rings to find out the age of that tree? Now imagine being halfway through that number and realizing that you lost count and you have to start all over again. Now that's a test of patience. Anyway, going back to dendrochronology, while the oldest tree in the world was about 4,900 years old, we can actually date wood further back to about 12,000 years. How can we possibly do that? That's more than double the age of the oldest tree. That's where the databases of tree ring patterns come in handy. The tree ring data banks contain information about hundreds of types of trees of various ages from all over the world. I mentioned earlier that the rings at the center of a tree are the oldest ones, while those at the edge of a tree are the youngest. That means that if we find correlations between the edge rings of one tree and the center rings of another, we can move back in time by thousands of years just by cross-referencing samples with similar ring patterns. You can see how this cross-referencing works in this example. Here, the edge region of the first wood matches the center region of the second wood, and then the edge of the second one matches the center of the third one, and the edge of the third one matches the center of the fourth, and so on. This is how we can go back in time thousands of years by searching for similar patterns between the old part of one tree and the new part of another. And when we have an undated wooden object, we can date it using these tree ring databases. You're probably wondering now why do we have differences in tree ring patterns? It's because the environmental conditions have a strong influence on the tree growth. And we can see this by analyzing the shape of the tree rings. The narrow rings represent years of drought that hinder the growth of the tree, while the wider rings represent years of more favorable conditions for the tree growth. And there's more. The tree ring fingerprint also shows the times when the tree went through forest fires and the post-fire regeneration. And we can also see signs of insect attacks or the influence of strong winds on the tree growth. So you see, the tree holds an abundance of information about their history. Dendrochronology has a very wide range of applications and we can learn a lot about the wooden objects by looking at the tree rings on that wooden object. The applications of dendrochronology vary from climate studies to helping with the radiocarbon dating calibration to art and archaeology. In cultural heritage, we can use dendrochronology to date heritage objects that are made of wood. Case studies where dendrochronology was successfully applied on these types of cultural heritage objects include paintings on wood panels, musical instruments such as the famous Messiah violin of Antonio Stradivari, 
and shipwrecks such as that of the Mary Rose. I hope you enjoyed learning about dendrochronology and how we can use the information from the tree rings to find out the age of objects that are made of wood and to learn more about those objects. Let me know in the comments below this video if you know of some interesting applications of dendrochronology. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe and hit the bell button for more fun videos from cultural heritage and heritage science. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye!